Okay. Next one's ready. I've had a plenty of beer because that last video would drive anybody to drink. That was shockingly bad. Oh, I just even thinking about it just hurts my head. Right. Ty has sent me the link to this one. I'm sure it was him. If not, then I'm apologies to who did. But that last video, Ty, if that was you, my God, please, please, <laughs> never again. So the next video, how much will your World War II US impression cost? Yeah, I don't know we're going to get the answer to this. But it will be intriguing to see what he says. Oh, when was this filmed? Um, August. Wait a minute. 21st of August. 2000. That was the other day. Oh, okay. So very, very current. I thought if this is like 10 years ago, it would be interesting to see the price difference. So, <laughs> wow. A um, couple of weeks ago, this was filmed and he gets a review already. That's got to be some sort of record, hasn't it? Okay, let's hit play and see what he says. Hey everybody, this is Wolver Guy here today, and today, I, as you can tell by the title, we're going to talk about the average cost for a World War II American impression. Now, you guys may have seen the German one that I made, I don't know, Just last crap. month, I think, uh, and I had a few comments asking for the American uh, impression, because I'm sure most of you know that I have an American impression. Now, this impression, I will say before we get started, is it's a lot more... There's a bigger range in the overall price that you're going to pay because this actually depends if you're going to buy originals or reproductions. And unlike German impressions, there's a lot more originals still around at, at actually a cheaper price than some reproductions. Mm. <clears throat> so, of course, keep this in mind. Now, for my list, I did uh, something similar to a late war impression um, post D Day. We're not doing D Day, it's going to be like post D Day. And that's kind of like where I'm basing this, this list from. Now, of course, if you do early impression, you do specific impression like uh, D-Day Normandy, uh, these prices will vary because certain items change. Yep. But with that being said, based on my impression that I have, you can check, for example, my late war impression, uh, that cost me about $910, so way cheaper than, excuse me, than the German. Wow, if that's for a complete impression... So we don't know what complete means. Again, it's one of these words people use. I've got a complete set of webbing. What the hell is a complete set of webbing? Um, a complete impression. Is that uniform webbing weapon? Or is that literally everything? Your wash kit, whistles, clickers, hawkins, combat knives. Uh, you know, everything that you would want. In which case, $900 or even... 900 pounds um you can't even get a grand for for that you can get a denix but you know that yeah that's that seems really cheap but then i'm not sure what he's bought for that impression but there's a there's multiple reasons uh one i don't really have a lot of personal items for my american that, impression okay. unlike my german one which is a little bit more detail my american impression is very surface level okay so there, uh, everything so there we go so it's the it's the, it's the basics it's the uniform webbing weapon See, is basically everything I have. There's not much interior, interior stuff such as pocket litter and Fine. personal items and food and things like that. Uh, another reason why this is also a lot cheaper is the rifle. I don't have a rifle. Wow. Uh, M1 Grands are very expensive, and yep, I just cannot bring myself to spend that kind of money um, at yeah, the moment, at least. But so 910 for that impression. Now, if I do add a rifle, these can range from. If you get it from the CMP, I've seen some people last year, year or two, get them for around the $700 range for a field grade uh, example where it's not the best condition. You know, it might have some nicks and cracks in the stock or the barrel is not as pristine as you'd want. So that's what you want, though. You, who cares if it's... You don't want a mint condition one. Uh, and other ones, I've seen them go upwards to $2,100, so $2,100. And then... Um, of course, anything in between. So, if I want a nice rifle, I calculated about like fifteen hundred dollars to one thousand five hundred. That would bring that's me that's interesting. That's that's comparable. Obviously, in the states, these things are out there. You can use them. Over here, we're stuck with Denix, which is like one hundred fifty quid or whatever they are, uh, or deactivated ones. 
And it's interesting that the price of actual working firearms in the States is comparable to deactivated ones over here. As he said, for a, a nice-ish one, you're talking a grand and a half. Yeah, I. that's what they go for. $10 for the impression. And if I get a good deal, like a $700 CMP rifle, uh, you know, maybe I get lucky, that would bring me more to about $1,610. Now, of course, that is greatly dependent on the rifle, depending where I get it, with the condition and everything. That doesn't even include the ammo that I would like to buy, whether it's blanks or live ammo. Uh, of course, this impression, like I said, doesn't include the personal items. And of course, there are there is room for improvement. Uh, in this in, in this here, I did include reproduction stuff. So, for, for example, trousers, I included the reproduction trousers, yep. which come at around $100. And a reproduction haversack, which comes also at around $100. If you buy an original haversack, original pair of pants, both of them combined, they'd probably bring you to maybe $100, honestly. So that can yeah. lower the price. Yeah. Um, a helmet, you want to get a good helmet. I got mine for about $150, including the liner. Um, of course, this depends. Like, I had to refurbish the helmet, so I didn't even include the cost for the paint, the corking, um, sort of reproduction item. Yeah, helmets are one of the most awkward things to buy. There's no one-stop shop, especially in the UK, where you can just go and buy a helmet. You can get the crappy European clone pieces of shit quite easily. Or at least you used to. Even though it seems to be disappearing because everybody's buying them without knowing what they're doing. But as you said, when you buy one or the pieces to make one you have to put it together yourself if you're doing a paratrooper one you normally end up buying a, the fiber type liner as you can see there you buy the shell you then buy a-frames you buy your chin cup you buy the strap uh, and sometimes you even have to put the other the canvas the webbing straps on the side as well um, it's quite a lot of work and then paint the thing as well yeah it's it's a hassle and they are going up and up and up in value the liner I had to get refurged by Jay Murray, and I think it didn't cost me that much, but I could be wrong. So maybe it's closer to $200 for this helmet right here. And of course, this goes with the just interesting. Hold on. I just did one the other day. Let me... Was it this one or the other one? So... I think it was that one, but... So the liner, I picked up 30 quid, which I thought was a good deal. Set of fairly decent... A frames, you know, the solid ones, not those cheapy, flimsy ones. They were 15 quid, so that's 45. The leather chin strap, that was another tenner, 55. The shell was 150, that's 205. Um, the net was another tenner. The scrim I make, so we won't count that, but you know, that that's 220 odd quid. He's right, yeah, that's it's crazy how quickly it mounts up. Cartridge belts. You're using an original cartridge belt. They might cost you around hundred dollars. Reproductions, hundred or fifty dollars, depending on where you're buying it. Yeah. See, we're kind of lucky doing uh, paratrooper that you wear pistol belts. And originals, you find originals for exactly the same price, sometimes cheaper than the uh, reproductions. Uh, you'll get them 25, 25 quid usually. Uh, but they seem to come out of weird places like, you know, the Czech Republic or Russia or you know, it's cheaper buying from somewhere like that than it is finding one in the UK. Um, so the American impression, I would safely say, can easily range you from $1,600 to $2,500. That is like very, you know, ballpark range. It's not as precise as the German impression. So I hope you guys remember that when you are starting your American impression. It may be cheaper, but one of the more expensive things is going to be the rifle. And that's with really every impression. The most expensive item is going to be the rifle. Yeah. That's just the way it is. Yes. Well, so, well, you... Yeah. The only exception to that being that if you buy a Denix, Denix is 150 quid for a grand. That helmet's going to cost you 200, 220. Your jumpsuit's 150 quid. If you buy Corcoran's, that's what, 150, 160? I don't know what they go for at the moment, 180. Um, so, but then of course it's a Denix piece of shit that also needs work. So, uh, <laughs> lose lose, really. With that being said, of course, before I continue, this is for the rifleman. This is not for any support like mortars or a, yeah. a NCO or anyone who might have a, a Thompson you know, submachine gun or a BAR or M1 carbine or mortar or anything like that. It's a basic rifleman, yeah. infantry rifleman, M1 grand, bare bones. 
So with that being said, that does conclude today's video. I hope this was informative. I hope the, the especially the new one, the new uh, people starting this impression, I hope this helped them at least get an idea of how much money they're going to spend for it. Uh, of course, this... Well, you, yeah, it, it was a good idea for a video. You could have gone into a bit more detail on, you know, each individual thing that you need. Um, but, you know, the video could be bloody hours if you if you went into so, too much detail. But, yeah, it's, it is a good idea to do this to help people coming into the hobby. Because it's a scary lot of money you end up spending. Um, one thing we do in Mr. Up 44 is the guys, the guys tell people when they join, you only need, I say only, boots, a listed man shirt, M42 jumpsuit, and a helmet. Those four things, or if you want to count the jacket and trousers as two things, then five things. That gets you into the field we can lend you all the other nonsense like you know you borrow a weapon you can buy a we borrow webbing that's fine but those four th those four or five things you get those but it's not just as i said in lots of videos you buy those it's not just case to put them on you've got a cc2 uniform you've got to put a patch on it you've got to sort the helmet out with the net the scrim the a-frames uh it it's just those odd bits is so much work on their own once you've got those and got those right then then you look at buying the other things there's no point going out and trying to buy everything in one go as you said it's what eight hundred dollars nine hundred dollars to do a, a rifleman impression just those so m42 jumpsuit it's 150 quid say 200 for a helmet 350 pair of boots we call them 150 just for easy um four five shirt 550 so you're talking 500 ish to 600 quid just for those just for just for those items alone just to turn up dressed um your webbing's gonna be i don't know two three hundred um and that that's basic basic stuff a rifle on top of that 150 so already you you're getting close to that 1000 pound mark and you've hardly really scratched the surface of the stuff you need to do living history in it. That's just turning up dressed. Uh, yeah, it's not a cheap hobby, which is why we did this. If you can turn up in the minimum amount of kit, turn up dressed, that's good enough. Because we can't expect everybody to go spending a grand in one go. And also, you can't. It's not even possible to do that. Even if you had the money and you say, right, I want to go reenacting tomorrow. I don't own anything. Where can I buy it from? You can't. You just can't do that. It, it, it all of it takes time and effort. And not that it's hard, just needs you know you need time to go and soak your M42 in decking oil, time to hang it in the garden, time for it to dry. It's not do it one day, wear it the next. Um, it's just it's just not that easy. Anyway, uh, I'm waffling a bit, but yeah, I mean yeah, he yeah that was you know fairly fairly informative in in a basic kind of way. Yeah, good. It's good that people out there are trying to help people get into the hobby because it's really not an easy hobby to get into. There's so many nutcases in charge of groups that are so power hungry and just they're almost against the hobby. Yeah, well, I'm sure we'll encounter some of those later on anyway. Right, enough for now. On to the next one shortly.